Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to machine learning. In this video, we will be talking about a very important topic, and that is the probability distributions. Let's jump right in. So let's say we perform a experiment where our random variable has two possible outcomes. So for example, if we uh, throw a coin, we can get either heads or tails. So our random variable is a binary random variable where we have either x is 1 or x is y. And we call the probability of x is 1 is mu and the probability of x is equal to 0 is 1 minus mu. So we can say that we have a probability mass function where the probability of x given mu is mu to the power of x times 1 minus mu times uh, to the power of 1 minus x. So let's say we have, for example, a coin that is heads is equal to 1 and that is 0 0.7. So we have not a fair coin and tails is equal to 0. That is equal to 3. So now we can say, well, this is our mu and this is our 1 minus mu and we get 0 0.7 to the power of x minus, or let's just say, let's get rid of this, times 0 0.3 of 1 minus x. And now we can also say, well, if we have this probability mass function, because it's a mass function and not a density function, because this is a discrete case, we can say that we expect on average the value mu, because x is 1, this comes from here, and our variance is mu times 1 minus mu. So the more these differ, so for example here we have 0, what is this, 250, and here we have for example 700, 750. The more these differ, the higher we have the variance. And the expected value is this one, because it's coming from here. If you remember how we get the expected value, let's have a look how we got the expected value. We got the expected value like this. And if our x is zero, we will only have the probability of our, where x is one. So we'll get rid of this and go back to our distribution functions. So this is a very simple distribution and now we will go to the binomial distribution and that is basically just the same as the uh, Bernoulli distribution, just a sum overall. We have this, uh, we perform this experiment multiple times and we have multiple results and we just sum up over all possib possibilities. So we see the exact same term that we had before this one right here, but now we have not only the probability of a result given k, but we also have the mu and the number, how many times we performed this experiment. And this will get us a n over k, where n over k is n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times k factorial, so this is the very important term, where we have k observations for x is 1 in n trials. So if we say that we have 100, uh, 100 uh, times we performed this experiment with mu is equal to 0 0.8, we will get a distribution like this. So the probability of getting 80, because 0 0.8 times 100 is this will be our most probable value. So the expected value is nu times n, and the variance is n times nu times 1 minus nu. The uniform distribution is a very important term when we talk about noise. So if we have a uniform distribution, we're saying that basically every value is equally probable. So we have 1 over b minus a because we're ranging from a to b and 0 otherwise. So now we can say that if every value is equally probable, we say that the expected value is 1 over 2 times a plus b, 
and the variance is 1 over 12 b minus a squared. So if you look at a graph, for example, that is right here from 10 to 20, you say that every value is equally likely. And now to the most important distribution, which is the Gaussian distribution, also called the normal distribution. So we say that Pn, the normal distribution, the probability of x given mu and sigma squared is equal to 1 over square root 2 pi sigma squared e to the power of 1 minus or minus 1 divided by 2 sigma squared x minus mu squared. So we will see a distribution if it's centered around 0. That, that was ugly. That looks like this. If it is not centered around 0, we will see... Oh, sorry, this is not the binomial. That's supposed to be the Gaussian distribution that will also look like this. So because we will talk about random variables, the, uh, we have multidimensional random variables, so we have random variables x and y, we can also get the Gaussian distribution for a d-dimensional distribution. So we have 1 over pi with d divided by 2, d is our dimension, the root of the determinant of our covariance matrix, the covariance matrix looks like this, where we have the variances, the, the variance of each variable on the diagonal and the covariance on the non-diagonals, to the power of e to the power of minus a half, x minus mu transpose, the inverse of our covariance matrix times x minus mu. The expected value is mu and the variance is sigma squared. And we need those values to define our probability density function. A probability density function in 2D looks something like this, where we have two distributions in x and y like this. And we can say that the probability of exactly this value and this value are the most probable because the height of this bulge that we give uh, get is our probability. So we can say, well, what is the probability of exactly this value, but in and this y. So we have probability of x and y. And we see that this probability is very, very slim. I hope this video gave you a small introduction to the topic of the distributions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.